This system has to be one of the easiest ways to get started in hydroponics. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can do it at home from beginning to harvest. Now this video is not sponsored in any way by Autopot. I've bought this kit myself and I'll put all the details of the costs in this video. You don't need to start with a system as big as this. You can buy just the basic two pot system, which I highly recommend. I've got 20 pots growing behind me and they are going absolutely gangbusters. Now I love this system the most because it's completely passive. It uses gravity to feed the pots. All I have to do is check the hydroponic nutrient reservoirs once every week or month in the early stages later stages they drink a bit more water so you check it a bit more often top it up but apart from that you may check the valves clean some roots but and compared to other hydroponic systems that i've got going this is hands down one of the best passive all right from here on in i'm going to do this as a voiceover because i'm a millennial and i didn't know what to say when i was doing this unboxing video but anyway, here's the boxes. They came really well packaged. I bought this particular system from a company in Australia called Garden Smart Shop. I've bought the beginner kit from them before. They've always been great and uh, have had no problems with them. So the kit, I bought the 20 pot kit, as I said, and it comes with these valves. These valves are sort of the most important part and we'll get to them a little bit later on. Actually, let me quickly explain the significance of these little valves before we jump any further into the video because it is what makes these systems so impressive. It makes them completely passive. So let me explain and then you'll see it again later to reinforce the learning. Completely passive ebb and flow system. It's passive in the sense that gravity does all the work, there's no electricity. And that's because of this smart valve, which is basically the whole brain of the kit. It's a plastic float valve that is designed essentially to trigger when the water level reaches a certain level. So in this pot, when the plants have drunk through this hydroponic nutrients and this valve becomes, I guess, empty, it triggers itself to fill up again. And then the valve floats back up until it reaches a set level. Then the plants drink through it and the valve triggers again and it releases water again. And this just keeps cycling as the plants require it, creating this ebb and flow system without you having to do anything except keeping the hydroponic nutrient reservoir topped up, which feeds the main line here, which comes off this four millimeter poly. So yeah, I've just triggered this and now this is filling back up this pot and it'll come back up to around these salt lines here and then the plants will drink through it and again, it'll go around and around in its cycle. And that is the brain of this system. And that is what makes it so exciting. I also got the root mats that you can see here, as well as the mulch mats, which go on top. So the pots are just a standard looking pot. Here they are, pretty standard. Just looks like a plastic pot. This one's full of valves. Here's another box full of stuff. This one's got some more valves, as well as the stands for the pots, which the valves fit into, as again, you'll see very shortly. Here's what the stand looks like. And the valve is just going to sit in here like this. Very nice. All right, let's see what else came with the intermediate kit. Uh, I expect this is just some um, joiners, fittings, things like that. Let me get it open here. Bit of a mess around. Yeah, so there's some things to connect up the poly pipe. So there's four mil pipe here, and there's also the 13 mil that we run as the main line. Okay, so it took me a little minute just to figure out where I was gonna put this system. Obviously it's gonna be outdoors. I don't have anywhere undercover to put it. So it's gonna be exposed to the elements, rain, hail, and shine. It's gonna get everything as we'll see later in the video. Now, I didn't wanna put this on soil cause I may as well have just grown in the soil. So I'm making use of this little courtyard area here, which is just some brick pavers. And one of the key things with these pots when we're setting them up is that we need to make sure that they are level. I found this out the hard way because one of the valves was a bit hit and miss, wasn't always doing its ebb and flow, really filling the pot. And I realized after a bit of trial and error, that was because the pot wasn't actually level. So once I leveled it, things worked pretty well from there on in. Yeah, so I spent a bit of time adjusting the layout, figuring out which way I liked it, where the sun came in the morning, trying to optimize to get as much of that sunlight as possible. But yeah, once I was reasonably happy with where the pots were, I put this 13 mil main line down and connected it up to my 200 liter reservoir. The next thing to do was to connect the little valve. So this goes from the 13 mil line, it splits into the four mil poly and the four mil poly connects to these special valves. And what happens is, is the pots fill up with water, as you can see happening here. The plants drink through that water or the water fills the pots up through the vermiculite and perlite, which we'll get to shortly. And once the tray is empty, 
the valve triggers to refill it again. So it's sort of a passive ebb and flow system. And this is what makes it so great. It's completely passive. You don't need any pumps. You don't need anything. Gravity does all the work. So here I am just cutting that 13 mil poly and I'm gonna put a little T in here. So it goes 13 mil to four mil outlet there. So that's where the four mil poly will connect into. It was a little bit difficult to connect this up. Uh, I just used my hands and gave it a bit of muscle, but yeah, after doing a few of these, my hands are a bit sore, but um, anyway, showed that I was working hard. So yeah, the four mil outlet there, we put a little bit of four millimeter poly and we connect that to the float valve. Now, because I bought the intermediate kit, it didn't come with any substrates. If you buy the beginner kit, I think it generally comes with a couple of bags of the substrate to put in the pots. In this case, I'm using vermiculite and perlite blend, a 50-50 blend. I got this from my local hydroponic store. I think these bags were $45 each and I think I used a bag and a half in the end. Anyway, this stuff is super, super dusty. So make sure you're wearing the right PPE to handle this stuff follow the instructions at all times you don't want to be breathing in any of this dust it's not very nice some people wet this up and wash it a little bit i didn't do any of that i just threw it straight in the pots i've got no time for plants that can't survive in a fast-paced environment like it's 2025 come on we have no attention span anymore so these plants are just going to have to live with what they've got here in front of them right now I did use the hose to kind of try and stop some of that dust. It didn't really work. It was a bit of a waste of time. But anyway, I've got a base mask on, as you can see, but do follow the instructions and make sure you're wearing the correct PPE. So yeah, I went through, I filled up all the pots here. I had the little weed mats in the bottom that came with the kit. I, you saw them a little bit earlier on. So that will just stop the roots from growing into the pots and getting into that special valve. Yeah, so I moved all those pots around to the front yard. I don't know why I did them in the backyard here, just to save making a mat. Hey, at this point, we're also going to need some seedlings. I actually started these seedlings before I filled those pots up. So let's just jump forwards in time and pretend that we are now got some seedlings. So we filled the pots up. We've got our little seedlings. So I'm planting mostly heirloom tomatoes, varieties that you cannot get in the shop. Things like black Russian, brandy wine. I've got some Tommy Toe, Santorini, all sorts of different varieties. I love different varieties of tomatoes. And that is the main reason I grow hydroponically is because it's so easy. So easy to grow these heirloom varieties. I've also got capsicums growing and I also start some cucumbers, I think in this video. Later on, I'm gonna get rid of the cucumbers because I get so many cu cucumbers from the NFT system that I bought off eBay. And I have a video about that. I get so many cucumbers from that system that I didn't need them in these pots anymore. So I changed them over to beans and kale because we're a little bit later in the season. Anyway, that'll all make sense as you continue watching the video. So here I go, I write little labels for all of these because I have absolutely no idea what I'm planting. If I don't, I'll just forget and then I'll go, hmm, that's a tasty tomato, but I don't really know or remember which variety it was. Okay, let's just slow down for a minute because we really need to talk about hydroponic nutrients. Nutrients? Yeah. I feel like this is the part where most people give up on hydroponics because they think it is too difficult. Now, if you feel like that might be you, and I hope it's not because it is not difficult, but you could start with the beginning kit that I popped up before. That kit comes with a part A and part B hydroponic nutrient solution. At least check it does wherever you are. So you don't really need to think about going out and also buying hydroponic nutrients as well as the kit. But look, hopefully today I can convince you that it's not that difficult. Hydroponic nutrients can be broken down into really some simple components. It is generally sold in a part A and part B solution. Part A is the NPK and part B is a calcium nitrate. Sometimes it does come in as one part solution. It can also come in powdered or liquid form and it can also come with pH buffers, which is another thing that you need to consider when you're doing something like what I'm doing. Testing pH though is pretty simple. You can just buy those little test strips and you can buy pH up and down at your local hydroponic stop or even a hardware store. But back to hydroponic nutrients. So as I said, it comes in two parts. A simple kit like this, hydroponic nutrients, comes in two parts. Part A, as I said, is the MPK. Part B is the calcium nitrate. Now, something like this costs 13 or $14, and you need 120 grams in 100 liters of water. The instructions say that there. So something like this is not gonna make that much liquid because it's only 360 grams, right? So look, you could run a system using something like this. It's just that when you're running as many pots as I am, not just these auto pots, but also the unlimited crack keys, the NFT tables, the Dutch buckets, plus the deep water culture and all the crack keys buckets as well. This 
Unfortunately for me, it just wouldn't cut it, but it might for you, right? Don't dismiss it and don't rush out and just buy a big bulk nutrient bag. So what do I use? I use these bigger 25 kilo bags of diamond special tea and calcium nitrate. Here's the thing though, you shouldn't rush out and buy something like this either because these formulas change depending on what you wanna grow. I'm focused on tomatoes, which is what the diamond special tea is designed for. If you actually read about it, then you'll find out that they also make other diamond whites and diamond blues, and they're all for different things. So you wanna select the NPK fertilizer that is most applicable to whatever it is that you're growing. I also follow the instructions on these as well. It is to mix one gram per liter into my hydroponic reservoir. I use a 200 liter reservoir in this system. I actually use two 200 liter reservoirs. I have a flow valve between one and the other. So basically I watch one drain and when it's, fill, when it's drained to the bottom, I switch off the tap. I know I've still got 200 liters in this reservoir. Then I mix up this 200 liters again, turn the flow valve back on, and that way I always have a buffer and I know that I can always mix up just 200 liters. Why? Because it's easy. Because if I need one gram per liter in my 200 liter reservoir, I only need 200 grams of diamond special tea and 200 grams of calcium nitrate. Hopefully that makes sense. And if I was using this, I would just follow these instructions. So here it's 120 grams per 100 liters. So 240 grams of part A and 160 grams of part B. So yeah, depending on what you're growing is gonna depend on which hydroponic nutrients you go for. And that is something that I think you could do a little bit of research and create quite good results. So anyway, enough about me talking about hydroponic nutrient solution. Let's mix some up and let's put it in the reservoir and watch these pots grow. So I've got some small scales here. And as I said, I'm gonna mix up one gram per liter now. There was a little bit of water left in the bottom of that hydroponics reservoir, it's probably 20 liters. So I reckon I'll go 180 grams of part A and 180 grams of part B. It's a lot easier to add more nutrients than it is to try and drop the nutrient level. So this is the part B. And the part A. Now I might not have mentioned, I don't think I did. If I did, I'll edit it out <laughs> anyway. The reason these can't be stored together is because they will precipitate, they'll form salts if they're stored together because of the chemicals or the nutrients in each one, right? So if it, that happens, the salts are not available to the plants. So what we do is we mix them up separately and then we dilute them into the 200 liters. When you pour this into the 200 liter reservoir, they will not cause salts and the nutrients will stay available to the plants. But that's why they just can't be stored together and that's why they're often sold as part A and part B. So let's mix those up and then let's chuck them in the reservoir. Here's our tank water. In goes that part A and in goes part B. And then we can give that a good mix. So the last thing we can do is just, if you've got one, use a nutrient truncheon just to check the EC. That's absolutely spot on for what I want for my tomatoes, 2.4 to 2.6. And the other really important thing is the pH. So we want this around 6, 6 or 5.8, 5.9. It normally comes out of my tank pretty much spot on. I don't generally have to adjust it. All right, guys. Well, enough of my voiceover madness. I feel like I'm talking like a mad person, but that's apparently helps you stay attentive and following along the video. Let's just watch now as these plants transform. I 
Okay, at this point, you can see these systems are outside. They're in the rain. And we also had some hail, which did cause a bit of damage. There's a few holes in the little plants here. Poor little things. Look, they slowed down a little bit after that, but they have come fighting back and they're going even better than before. I was a bit worried that some of the salt might be washed out of the buckets into the into the roots and cause some death and things like that, but nothing to worry about. Everything was completely fine. It just goes to show that you can really overthink these hydroponic systems, and sometimes the best hydroponic system is the one you get started with. So if you really want to give hydroponics a go, I would highly recommend these pots. They are one of the most simple ways to get started in hydroponics. Even if you just start with the two pot system, you can see the kind of amazing results you can get from just something like that. Well, have I convinced you that this is the best hydroponic system for beginners? Even if it's just a two pot system that comes with a bit of nutrients, you don't even have to mix up your own. I'm now enjoying so many tomatoes from this system and I've had to do barely anything. It's been completely passive. I've just mixed up hydroponic nutrients, topped it up as I went along, checked the pH, and it's as simple as that. And now I've gotten more tomatoes than I know what to do with. And geez, they taste great. Mm. Is there anything better?